Yes, what's good people and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about 10 ways you can avoid ruining your tank. The first one I can think of is dirty hands. So when I say dirty hands, I mean since the corona pandemic, we've been washing our hands using antibacterial wipes, cleansers and all sorts of stuff just to keep our hands clean. Now, these cleaners can find themselves within our aquarium if we don't take that time to wash your hands thoroughly. So if you do want to use your anti antibacterial wipes or whatever, just ensure that you know you rinse your hand thoroughly. And what you can do as well is wear a glove. A lot of people say to me that they don't wear gloves. They just you know put their hands in their tank and that's that's it. They just carry on. The reason why I believe that using gloves is so important is that all the crap that you have on your hands doesn't get into your tank and affecting your fish. Just think if you have something toxic on there and you just dip your hands into your salt water aquarium issues, yeah? So I would say dirty hands, big no-no guys. Ensure that your hands are clean, wear a glove. Um, if you can get gloves that go all the way to your elbows, yeah, get that. Just ensure that your hands are protected against whatever is in your aquarium and in your aquarium is protected by whatever is on your hand. Overfeeding, yeah? These fish will eat and eat, but then if you put too much food into your system, then you'll have issues like algae and other things that you don't want growing in there. So just feed the right amount to maintain the right balance of nutrients in your system. Let's talk about a zero nutrients. So guys, I said that you shouldn't overfeed, but you shouldn't underfeed. So when I say underfeed, feed so little that your corals and your fish are starving. For example, this is what could potentially happen to your coral if there aren't enough nutrients in your system. When I say nutrients, I mean nitrates and phosphates, guys. So like I said in my last couple of videos that my phosphorus and my phosphates were like dangerously low. So I had to up the phosphates or the phosphorus that entered my system. So underfeeding is a no-no, guys. So zero nutrients in the system, in my opinion, NASA. And ensure that you got some nitrates and phosphates in there. Now the next point is very important, testing your water. And when I say testing your water, I don't mean do it like this. 35 PPT. Hmm. Now when I say test your parameters or test your water, I mean using something that's designed specifically to test the parameter you're testing. So if you're testing your salinity, use one of these or a refractometer for um, specific gravity. If you're testing for calcium alkalinity, ensure that you're using an in-date test kit to ensure that everything that you're trying to achieve is within your range. Don't just guess, that's bad. Never dose anything into your tank without testing first. Very, very important because you don't know how much you need to dose and you don't know in the first place, are you over the number you need to be? I've been guilty in the past of overdosing certain elements, certain minor trace elements in my system as well. So you've done your calcium or whatever test you've done and you realize that you need to dose something into your tank. That's why it's so important guys to ensure that you measured whatever you need to dose into your system. Also, when you're catching up with your dosing, do not dose everything you need to dose right into the tank. What I recommend you doing if you have, for example, 20 mil of calcium or magnesium to catch up with, all you do is you break that up over two days, you dose half of it, like so. And then what you do, you test, and then the next day, you dose the other half, simple as that. That way you're ensuring that you're not overdosing or dosing anything into your system too fast. Trust me, I learned the hard way. Another important one that I think a lot of people underestimate is the power of these LED lights. Now there's no point, like I said, in putting your LEDs up to 100% and your corals are suffering for it. You find that they might start bleaching, they might start receding or just being closed up all the time because of too much darn light, guys. So take it easy, you know, take it to a, a low setting on your LEDs and then gradually increase by observing your corals to ensure that they are responding favorably to the increase in light as well. And it's very important to do your research, which takes me to my next point. Always research and read up on any bit of coral that you are putting into your system there's no point in you spending a hundred million pounds well not that much whatever you're spending on your coral and not knowing the requirements i.e., temperature 
um, alkalinity, um, even the um, amount of power that each coral requires to grow and to create those amazing colors, guys. It's very important that you do your research. I'm going to say something that's a bit controversial here. Our tanks are always in a state of crashing. Now, when I say that, people will be like, what do I mean? I mean that if you don't do certain things for your tank throughout the day, like for example, if you've got LPS and SPS here, like what I've got here, and you aren't dosing throughout a couple of days, things can go bad. Things can go really, really wrong where your alkalinity drops too low and then things start dying. If your heater goes above a temperature or below, you can have issues as well. If you are uh, are feeding too much, you can have issues as well. So just remember, all the life support yeah, that we provide for our tanks is very important and it's very important that we get ourselves into a nice routine as well to ensure that our tanks do as best as they possibly can. And here's one that some people may overlook or we overlook. Routine. Putting your tank in your daily routine will help you maintain and recognize when your tank is either stressed or something is out of whack. So on the morning or on the afternoon, whenever you come in, just have a look at your tank just to see that it's okay. And try to do that as often as possible throughout the day or even every you know two days just to ensure that your tank is looking good. Um, nothing is uh, awry or nothing is out of whack. Okay, so this is the last one for me, yeah? Temperature. So whatever you set your temperature for your tank, ensure that it sits within or close to that temperature as much as possible, yeah? And always have redundancy, guys. So lucky for me, I've got an Apex. I have it at the, you know, on my phone to tell me what my temperature is. If it goes below or above, I get a little email saying that. However, I do have redundancies like my um, HANA um, instrument uh, salinity tester with a, te with a thermometer on there. So that's another way you could tell. So always have two ways to tell your temperature uh, on your system. So thanks for watching guys and guys, thank you so much for subscribing. I love the comments and that. Someone said that uh, my music um, for my cutscenes was a bit too loud. So thank you for that. All I'll do, I'll try to readjust to ensure that the content I'm giving to you guys, you guys can enjoy it. And you know, you guys can feed me back some good comments as well. Um, someone suggested using another filter to uh, get rid of some of the blue lights. So I have tr been trying to use that today. So just let me, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe guys. I'll see you next time.